today is the beginning of the new liturgical year, the season of Advent. We also have the Advent wreath, and I will speak more of that during my homily. So in the weekly bulletin, let us turn to the page of the lighting of the Advent wreath. Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming. Advent begins the church's new liturgical year, starting with four Sundays before Christmas. The season of Advent has been set aside as a time of preparation since the 6th century. Advent is a time for preparing for Christ's second coming, even as we remember and celebrate his first coming at Christmas. This is why the color of the season of Advent is purple, which denotes and symbolizes forgiveness and repentance to receive him. On these four Sundays of Advent, we will realize that there will be a rose-colored candle in which we remember the Blessed Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is attributed that great joy of, and song, which is known as the Mag Magnificent. So now let us offer our prayer. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the first Sunday of Advent in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. God told Abraham that through him all the creation, all the nations of the world would be blessed because he trusted and put his hope in God. The Old Testament spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. He would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. We do believe in God's promise to send Jesus again to this world to establish his kingdom upon the earth. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we all have in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May we all recite together. God of Abraham and Sarah and all the patriarchs of old, you are our Father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready and to place our hope in you. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your hope with others. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen.
Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. For your penance for the next three nights, I ask that along with your evening prayer that you also recite the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be. And also to remember our sick and our suffering. And also, I ask that you please pray for Father Senior Sultishak as well as all those for whom we offer our intentions during the Mass of Health and Healing. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints in you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us of our sins and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and absolution and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority, vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts to Christ our Lord. Amen. I wait with longing for the Lord. My soul waits for his word. My soul looks for the Lord more than sentinels for daybreak. Good the Lord, everyone who waits for him, to the soul that sees him. It is good to hold in silence for the sake and help of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world by man. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son as our Savior and Redeemer. May we be his true and faithful followers, so that when he comes again, he may find us awake and performing our assigned tasks. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Such as they had not heard of from of old. 
No ear has it ever heard, no eye ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. The gradual. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. And should he come in the second watch, or the third watch, and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account. For the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, and that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lack, lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, John.
well as myself. It has something to do with our baptism. For we were all baptized in the living waters. And we were marked and set aside as his own. That is why we bless the church prior to Holy Mass. And we receive the blessings of God through the asperges of holy water. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered in Christ. Hope is being able to see there is light despite all darkness. Words from the late Bishop Desmond Tutu. Hope sees the invisible, <clears throat> feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. Words taken from Helen Keller. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, on this, the first Sunday of Advent, we begin, as many Christian denominations, with a new liturgical year and the lighting of a single candle. The first candle represents hope. But what is hope? Hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. <clears throat> we all have hopes. And we all hope to receive the blessings of not only life, talents, and abilities. As disciples of our Lord Jesus, we take on additional parameters because hope brings faith. In the New Testament, of the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews, we read, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Again, we as people all have common hopes. And it is in our Christian faith that our conviction becomes real and Christ in our lives becomes real, knowing that what God promised from the beginning became reality. Advent begins to tell the story of a longing of mankind for the promises of God to be fulfilled. That is why we use the Advent wreath. With the four candles circling each other. For they represent the wandering of mankind from the four points of the compass in their search for God. <clears throat> we also use the four candles because it was approximately 4,000 years that the promises were first made and fulfilled. Unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, you all know that there are so many people that are unchurched, people who are still wandering 
and searching for answers for the meaning of their lives. Yesterday, I attended a funeral service in Westfield, Massachusetts. I had spoke to a couple of members of the family of the deceased. And in the conversations, I heard of all the things that they have, all the things that they possess, all the things that they want to possess. And I thought to myself, is that what life is all about? To talk about the things that we have, to talk about the things that we want. And so, the question is asked, are you a member of the parish? Well, you know, Father, I'm really busy with everything that's going on. And I really don't go to church as much as I should. Talking about hitting the nail on the head with a hammer. Because I believe, and it's not only in this situation, but I've heard over the years many who've talked about their possessions. And when it came to the devotion, that became not as important. And so, in the season of Advent, we speak of longing and expectation. You know, there are some people that feel that Jesus, and the only time that we can speak of Jesus was when he was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And after he resurrected and he ascended into heaven, that's, that was it. But the fact remains, my brothers and sisters, is that according to our faith, there will be a second coming. And we will all face our Lord and Savior. Whether it be at the time of our death or at the end of the world. You know, when you really come down to it, what is lasting? Our, our possessions or our faith? You know, the season of Advent strives to bring those who will listen and reflect on the word of God's promise, calling back mankind to their beginnings, their origins, finding their way back unto God through the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies that was fulfilled with the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every Sunday of the season of Advent, another candle will be lit, which brings more light to the story of man's deliverance and salvation. The four candles represent the four virtues of Advent, of redemption, and of deliverance. Hope, peace, love, and joy. Jeremiah spoke and he said, you know, and again, Jeremiah was a spokesman for God, that he came to deliver to the people of their times, and in this case, Jeremiah's time, a message from God. You know what Jeremiah said in the 29th chapter, in verse 11? He said, for I know 
the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. May this Advent be for all of us a time of reflection of what truly is important. Paul gives a blessing and he says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.
sacrifice, may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have set aside the season to nourish our hope and our trust. We gather with you in expectation around your holy altar. Transform our gifts and return to us that we receive those things that are truly necessary as we await for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Praiseworthy people in 
encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his Almighty Father, in giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray in 
instructed by our Savior's teaching, have been following the line in example, we say with confidence,
what shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not ready to receive you, but only say a word and I shall be healed. I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have so that no one may take your crown. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, through your coming to us in the Word in the Eucharist, 
May we be prepared to face you at the final hour, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 